so the story I want to tell is um, centering on my childhood best friend um, and our travels together. And I know we haven't been able to travel for a while, so um, it sort of is a little bit nostalgic and reminiscing for me. Um, so I have a childhood best friend, um, and when I say best friend, um, I really mean sister and someone who has been with me since I first moved to Michigan with my parents. Um, I was 11 at the time. I'm the only child. And given the general, you know, bumpiness of being an immigrant, being a child of immigrants, I went to five different grade schools in four different countries. My parents were usually busy or working. I really wanted a sibling. Um, so Linda and I met in fifth grade um, and we were we've known each other now for over two decades. Um, she was the maid of honor at my wedding and I will be the maid of honor at hers, hopefully, fingers crossed, if it happens. And I'll get into why it hasn't happened. Um, we watched Sailor Moon together. We picked on her little brother together. Um, and we went to college in the same city, Boston. Um, we grew up, found partners, um, jobs. I became a writer. And she's read mostly everything I've written, I think, or, or so she tells me. Um, when I was growing up, um, my family moved around a lot, um, but we didn't really take that much vacation or time off. We just didn't have the means to, and we, you know, we always felt like we were a little bit behind. Um, then post college, I realized that I could make my own money um, by doing, you know, lots of jobs and tutoring and things like that. And with that money, I could travel to places just for fun. It was sort of a revelation to me in my 20s. Um, so Linda's a pharmacist and in pharmacy school, she met Ray, who is her now fiance. They've been together for 10 years. Um, because their initials are L and R, sometimes I refer to them as left and right. Um, my husband and my initials are M and W, so we are man and woman. Um, so the first time left and right traveled with, I guess, us, man and woman, was on a trip to Vegas. And that went pretty much as you would expect a Vegas trip to go for someone, for all four of us in our 20s, going to Vegas. Um, but during that trip, you know, we realized that the four of us really enjoy traveling together, even through disasters, like maybe losing one of us. Um, so we planned another trip. And this time we decided to go to New Orleans. Um, I had never been to New Orleans. My husband thought it was a great place and it's warm and the food is good. Um, and Linda's kind of a foodie, definitely a foodie. Um, so Linda's personality is pretty tame. She's um, some of the things that she likes. Um, she enjoys tiny cucumber sandwiches, afternoon tea, um, Harry Potter, Dutch ovens. Um, I would say she really likes fuzzy pillows and cream puffs and playing Animal Crossing. Um, she also likes eating uniquely flavored macarons, um, visiting bakeries, etc. Um, and where Linda has never been was a strip club. So Ray and I, my husband says he was not supportive of this at the time, but Ray and I, along with my husband, took her to a place that we said was probably a bakery, but was in fact a strip club. Um, we had her sit in the front row, sent shots over to her. Um, the stripper we asked to go talk to her did so, but then came back and said we were bad friends. So, you know, we did get judged for that. And, and we sort of felt madly bad about that. Um, so this began what has now become the four of us traveling together and pranking Linda. Um, the pranks that we pull are never usually planned. They're more spontaneous. Um, on our first trip to Paris, we stayed in the Marais, which is this like cute neighborhood, very Parisian, filled with boutique shops and restaurants. Um, sort of a perfect place for Linda. She can get fresh bread. She can get all the macarons she likes. Um, and at one restaurant one night during dinner, a fly had flown into Ray's wine glass and there's still wine in it. Um, and Linda and I were chatting about something else while on the other side of the table, my husband and Ray were discussing whether they could trick Linda into drinking the wine with the fly. Um, and she did it in one gulp. I mean, Ray just handed it over and she was like, oh, sure. After which my husband pretty much fell out of his chair laughing. Um, and this fly story has sort of become infamous in our like friend circles, one that we just talk about a lot, mostly to embarrass Linda. Now I'm you know, <laughs> doing it on um, the show. Um, and she's very good natured about it. She laughs along too, but she did drink a fly. Um, so when we're in Europe, one of the activities that Ray and Lai really like to do is rent bikes. 
um, because we know <laughs> Linda can't bike very well. Um, she has said it herself. She's admitted it. She can't pedal and pay attention to what's in front of her at the same time. So either she's pedaling, which means she's looking down at her pedals and her feet, or she's not biking and she's looking ahead. Um, and that sort of makes biking kind of an impossible task. She can drive, she's a good driver. Um, so when we visited Versailles, we rented bikes and you know, Linda's a little bit navigationally challenged too. So we kept telling Linda that we weren't at Versailles yet. She had to keep biking, even though we were, we were just circling the castle and Versailles was like right there. Um, when it was time to, you know, return the bikes, the three of us who were ahead stopped. We dismounted while Linda kind of just biked past us and we let her just bike alone and around Versailles for a little bit until she realized she was lost. Um, so we, we took pictures and um, she got back totally safe. Um, a year after that, the four of us took a trip to Spain. Um, so in, a pen, in the in the Penedes region, it's this um, it's the wine region of the of Catalonia outside of you know where Barcelona is. We rented electric bikes to do this like afternoon wine tour. Um, it's great, you know, you can kind of drive a um, bike around a little bit tipsy. But Ray and my husband told Linda that the electric motor wasn't working, so she had to like pedal manually up and down these huge hills, which she did because she's stubborn and she wants to prove herself to us. Um, it was a really good workout, though um, she was always the last in the tour and we had to wait for her. Um, but at the end, she asked me how I was going so fast. And I said, well, be because of the electric motor, and I just showed her with the press of a button. Um, and again, Linda is very good natured about all of this. Um, that's sort of one of the reasons we love her. Um, she might be really angry about it at the moment, but then, you know, we take her to a nice meal. We give her wine without any flies in it. And she's usually pretty good after that. And we have a really good time. Um, this is not to say that Linda hasn't gotten us back. Um, she knows that um, Ray and I are both really afraid of heights. So what Linda will do, will like do activities. So she and Ray have gone on hot balloon rides at like 6 a.m. And whenever we're on the top of a skyscraper or like at the at, at a balcony or at the Eiffel Tower or something, she'll try to pretend to push Ray over and Ray's sort of, um, you know, very terrified of that. Um, and when we were all on this cable car going up to Montserrat, which is this like fortress castle outside of Barcelona, Linda kept reciting death statistics. So like how often cable cars fall off their tracks, hit the ground and explode. And neither me and Ray were very pleased about that. Um, but it was a 10 minute ride, though she does know how to get us back. <laughs> um, so Linda was supposed to marry Ray two years ago and the wedding was set to happen in Provence, um, very Linda. It was a destination wedding. We were all very excited um, in a chateau with blue shutters. Um, and that's Linda's main request. She really wanted a chateau with blue shutters. Um, one ongoing pandemic later, the plan is that this May, they're getting married at the same chateau. And this is actually gonna be my first time abroad in two years, and I guess two and a half years. Um, I've been on a plane once in the last two and a half years back to Michigan to see my parents. Um, so this will really be my second time on a plane. And I haven't traveled much, not just because of the travel restrictions and sort of like, you know, the difficulty of travel, um, but because Zoom work has kind of taken over in my life, right? Um, I write and teach from home um, and the pandemic kind of accelerated um, that sort of like working ability in me. Um, and no surprise to anybody who knows me, but I am sort of a workaholic, that's why the central character in Jonah's Okay is a workaholic, albeit, you know, at the hospital in a different way. But I, I do miss traveling. I miss traveling with my friends. I miss doing stupid things like, you know, in Barcelona, I would flick Linda's cheek a lot and call her flan face, then buy her flan at every food market we went to. Or just putting together this like photo collage of um, Linda napping on public transit with her head on Ray's shoulder, which is actually pretty cute. Um, as opposed to the boys, um, Linda and I are big on planning. So um, that kind of means we are really, really big on Google Docs and shared Google Docs. We love it. Uh, we might not execute 99% of what we write down. We, we never execute 99% of what, or, or even like any, any percentage of it. But we love writing it all down. Um, we like texting about it. We like calling about it. Um, and we like sending each other links of places to go. So I felt that what the pandemic took from us, not just you know time with family and friends, 
um, and our general sanity and optimism is the joy that comes from planning together and looking forward to something together, like, you know, good memories, like, like a wedding. Um, this week I booked everything for this May trip. So actually just a few days ago, I booked it. Um, it was actually a pretty cathartic moment. Um, the trip includes a few days in France, then me and my husband are going to go to Portugal. Um, and I'm really excited about it, but I'm also incredibly nervous. Um, I'm nervous because what if everything falls through again, like it did last year and the year before. Um, I'm nervous that traveling will be horrible, um, but not in the way that it used to be horrible with like delays and things like that, rather than you know, I feel unsafe, right, in a, in a new place. Like being an American, being an Asian American, being a woman, being Chinese abroad. Um, I know the chances of something truly life-threatening happening is pretty low, but, you know, being harassed for how you look or sort of like the misinformation about, you know, this virus um, has happened before and it's sort of in the back of my head. Um, there's certainly safety in numbers, and that's why, you know, the four of us travel together, um, with my husband sort of always being dubbed as, like, our white ambassador, and we send him off to do jobs for us and come back. But I'm still pretty nervous. Um, so I think it's important for me to actually tell these stories and remind myself of these stories, because I know what's on the other side of travel, that despite all the disasters, the delays, the many fights that I get into with my husband, with Linda, with Ray, and the frustrating moments, the jet lag, oh my gosh, um, is this like great time and great memories that I'll have. Um, and even if things don't go well, you know, um, I'm looking forward to these like unplanned moments because that's so much of what life happens. You know, I had no plan to call Linda Flamface. It just sort of came to me and it sort of stuck, unfortunately, during that trip. Um, and I, I realized I have to kind of open myself up to spontaneity again and remind myself that there's something, you know, outside the safety of my office, which is really safe. Um, Zoom calls and work. Um, I can't wait, honestly, but I'm also scared. And I don't think travel will ever go back to normal um, or anything will go back to normal. But I do believe we'll find a new normal in terms of travel, in terms of coping with this kind of um, situation. And I'm also certain that in this new normal, I'm sure I'll find new ways to prank Linda, um, but that's going to be a really fun process for me. And that's what I'm looking forward to. So these are the stories I wanted to share um, and stories that have sort of kept me alive and looking forward to travel. So I do hope that in May I do get to do it again. And I hope Linda is open to another adventure with um, all three of us. Thank you.